take a sample of her blood, then get rid of that. These clones are not working. The original Alice is the key. Find her, and we can return to the surface. <laughs> It really is the end of the world. What happened to it? Because you must have taken it back. We lost half of the convoy. Pretty soon there'll be more of us dead than alive. Okay, spread out. Look for anything of use. Gas, food, ammo. You know the drill. going on? It's been feeding on infected flesh. My senses have detected Alice. Her powers appear to have grown at a geometric rate. I can have a strike team ready within the hour. Everyone is scared. Good thing we like a challenge. Make sure she's dead. Well, I'm coming for you. Shut her down. We fought the infection. We survived the apocalypse. And now we face extinction. Must be hungry. Here you go. You'd better be able to pay for that. Pay? No one steals from my cart. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I don't have any money. Thief! Oh, please. If you let me go to the palace, I can get oh. some from the Sultan. Do you know what the penalty is for stealing? No! No, please! The merchants are unfriendly. They're mischievous and brutal. One merchant tries to chop the hand of the princess because she takes an apple, which goes against Islam. In Islam, you are obliged to feed someone if they are hungry, over and over again. And that's what devout Muslims do. That's what devout good merchants do. And only in Saudi Arabia, if you are a thief, a real thief, and after three warnings and three convictions, if you steal something, is the hand removed. In one country, you know, with a population of a few million. And yet they opted to use that scene. It took us six months to get a meeting just to talk about the film. When Arab Americans protested against derogatory stereotypes in Aladdin, their concerns were first met with silence. Disney responded after the issue had received widespread negative press coverage. So we go to, to the corporate office in, in Burbank. And we sit there, and maybe 15 minutes into the meeting, I won't mention the gentleman's name, but he accused us, the three of us, of drumming up negative publicity against the film. And it was only months after that meeting that they changed part of the lyric. But Disney still kept the line, it's barbaric, but hey, it's home, which prompted the New York Times to write an op-ed piece saying, it's racist, but hey, it's Disney. When children see a movie, and then try to replicate the script and their toys that help them do that, a whole line of toys that are exact replicas of what they've seen on the screen. The message they're getting is, kids, when you play, you're supposed to play the movie. And here are toys to help you do it. And because children focus on the salient dramatic, the, sh the toy keeps them focused on that narrow plot. And when I hear a lot of my research has had um, been teachers describing play all over the world looking exactly the same. And it can stay the same and fixated and, and not evolve and change. When that happens, children learn the lessons they see in the media much more. We have no obligation to make history. 
We have no obligation to make art. We have no obligation to make a statement. To make money is our only objective. Are they teachers or are they entertainers? If they have so much power, I think it's time for them to feel some responsibility uh, to educate children about the world they really live in. I really believe that as an entertainer, you have a responsibility to be a teacher as well because you have someone's attention. Say something to him before he leaves. Rob's awesome. I'm gonna miss it. Rob, have fun in Japan. You owe me $11. Yeah. How are you gonna survive without Rob? He's like your main dude. Yeah, I know. Hey, how am I gonna survive without you? I don't know. I'm like your main dude. <laughs> what was that noise? He sounded like an animal. Me too. Yeah, just relax. Everything. Phone calls are pouring into the New York One newsroom as a thunderous, roaring sound. You can see something on the roof? What animal sounds like that? Shaking everywhere, man. It's like tremors. Looks like you should have left town a little bit earlier. Oh my God! Go, go, go! As the people of Tamil Nadu continue to rebuild after last December's devastating tsunami, the ocean has begun to offer up more than just destruction and heartbreak. Just a short distance from the discovery of a centuries-old city at Mahabalipuram, archaeologists have made another stunning find. I heard legends since I was a child about the giant creatures that once lived here, but now it seems those stories are true. Half buried in the sand and stretching 150 feet beneath the ocean lies something that may change paleontologists' understanding of prehistoric biology. Archaeologists are excavating what appears to be the fossilized remains of a giant creature. As yet unidentified, the remains are being examined to help scientists solve this colossal mystery. For Shreyas News India, this is Rupa Sridharan reporting.